Brakatha Yahweh, Brakatha Yahweh Shai, Brakatha Yahweh, Brakatha Yahweh Shai, Brakatha Yahweh, Brakatha Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, which you well. I want to say salutations to the hopeful elect out there, man. You Akim to Sadakim that do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. On the priest of mine coming with a GMS walking talk, and it's going to be entitled, His Name Was Slash Is Yahweh Shai. And the Yahweh Shai I'm referring to is what the world ignorantly, and sometimes not ignorantly, called Jesus Christ. His true name was Yahweh Shai. He spoke Hebrew. And one might say, well, you know, it doesn't matter what you call him. To them I say this, Acts 4 and 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved so the apostle Paul is saying look the name of Yahweh Shai is very important sometimes you might hear Yahweh Shai Mashiach Mashiach means the anointed Yahweh Shai broken down in the Hebrew Yah meaning he Yahweh Shai meaning deliverer the English transliteration of that today will be Joshua if you read the book of I want to say I believe it was Deuteronomy where Hosea's name was changed to Joshua because he shall save the elect. The same thing is written in the book of Sirach 46 and 1. But not a lot of people know that today, the true name of the Heavenly Father. It's growing, but it's not common. And there's a reason for that. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 30 verse 4. Who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fist? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name if thou canst tell? If thou canst tell. So if I say something like that to you, sounds like a secret, doesn't it? Sounds like a secret. Because the name of Yahweh Shai is, you know, is growing amongst the elect. A lot that people are waking up to the name. But for general for the general population out there it's still hid. That's why I just read the scriptures there. If you could tell, it's a secret, man. Not a lot of people could tell this name. But big butt right here. The Lord is gonna reveal it to a certain group of people. This is the book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 7. Surely the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahshua, will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Some with elder, apostle, high priest, Ariah, we believe through faith that the name was given to him. And we believe in that name, all right? If you want tangible evidence, like a a time machine, we don't have that. We're going based on faith. Because we have called upon that name, brother, different brothers have called upon the name of Yahweh Bashim Shai and experienced the force and power behind that name. And the Most High is going to always reveal this particular secrets, especially in the times that we're in, to his prophets. Every cycle, every generation. First Corinthians 14 and 32. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. So the word prophet, the prophets, prophesy seers, they say things before they happen, all right? And they're the mediators, all right? They make intercession between the Most High and men. So the Heavenly Father is not gonna come out of his heavenly throne to broadcast his name, he's gonna use men. And we believe that's what uh, the Most High did with the High Priest Ariah, and we, through the banner, starting with the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and different camps, did uh, not you know not every single one of them did keep the name of Yahweh Shai alive, and it's, it goes beyond just keeping it alive. You have to let people know, look, this is the only name that that you can be saved by, man. All right, you can't be knowing the name of the Heavenly Father and calling on. As the world will say it, Jesus Christ, man. Ugh. Ah. 
weird. <laughs> it's weird, man. Calling the Heavenly Father that after you know this thing. <clears throat> but to the ones of you that say, well, you know, you don't have any proof of what you're saying, and, you know, where's the archaeological studies? How do you know that's how you pronounce the Yah and the Ha? This is my answer. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We don't have a video recording of somebody, you know, when Yahweh Shai walked the earth saying the name Yahweh Shai, you know, that's how we say it. But we believe. We believe and we feel the force of the name Yahweh or Yahweh Shai. Yahweh, Yah, He, Hawa, to be, to exist, to breathe the most high's breath is in everything. It's the name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai is the name of His Son. It's a nomen nomen. He was going to be a deliverer which I'm going to go into those scriptures. And we also say, Bahashem Rakakwadash, in the name of the Holy Spirit. You know, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, yeah, the faith, the, the, our foundation starts with the name. It's very crucial, man. You call upon the name of Yahweh Bahashem Yahushai, it gets you through anything. But you got to believe that. You can't call upon the name half-assly. You got to be fully confident that Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, whatever your prayers might be, he's going to answer it. This is the book of Ephesians 2 and 8. For by grace are ye saved. So salvation ultimately is obtained through the Most High choosing you. All right? The Most High is calling. It's nothing of our own. We didn't choose to do this work. We didn't choose to have this faith. This is the Most High calls you, and ultimately we're going to know who's chosen only on the chariots. No matter how long we've been doing this, we still have to stay humble. Like, look, the Lord could zap me, take me out of there at any moment. So there's no room for complacency in this truth. That's how I come here at Great Millstone, starting with the apostles and the elders. We always push and advocate being diligent, always doing shows, you know, just always being spiritually active. You don't want to be a sloth. Because you can say whatever you want about Great Millstone, but when it comes to doing this work, they can't say we're slothful. We're constantly doing videos, constantly edifying. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is a gift of the Most High. So if salvation was given through the laws, where salvation is not brought through the laws. If it were, none of us would make it. None of this flesh. It's brought through faith. And another thing, too, that eliminates is you can't boast in your works. And thanks to Ephesians 2 and 8, you can't boast in your faith. So you can't say you did anything, really, at all, to obtain this. It all goes back to the Heavenly Father, man. Yahweh Shin Yahushua, He has to call you into it. And ultimately, he has to decide if you're chosen, and which we hope we're a part of it, man. We hope we're a part of the chosen. We don't know. But until then, we're going to do things that we know that the elect would do, according to the scripture. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai. And here, the English, they have Jesus. Again, but Jesus is a nomen omen. It's a, it's a name sign. It, it was going to mean something. And it means, again, Yah, see, how is Shai delivered? And he's the deliverer of his people. For he shall save his people from their sins. So, Yahweh Shai came on the earth. To save his people from their sins. Now what's a sin? I don't have the scripture lined up here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the book of First John. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the book of First John 3 verse 4. He really like the scenery, man. He really like the scenery. 
got the waters, got the ducks out here. It says, 1 John 3 and 4, Whosoever committeth sin, transgresseth, transgresseth, uh, tongue twister right now. <laughs> Whosoever committeth sin, transgresses also the law, for sin is transgression of the law. That's the biblical definition of a sin, to break the laws, statutes, and commandments that the Heavenly Father gave to his people. <clears throat> and we have sinned like crazy, man, every day. But Yahweh Shai being the ultimate sacrifice, the ultimate sacrificial lamb, because in the ancient times before Yahweh Shai, you'd have different sacrifices of animals to pardon these sins, you know, along with repentance. But Yahweh Shai now is that ultimate sacrificial lamb. Meaning we obtain salvation through faith in Him. Now, that doesn't give us a license to sin. Because the book of Justice, the 5th chapter, the 11th verse, tells us that we're going to rehearse the righteous act. You know? So it's all through mercy. Just think about it like if a cop pull you over, you know, for speeding or running a red light. He may or may not give you a ticket. One cop might give you the ticket. One cop might say, I'm going to let you off the hook. You didn't do anything to get that cop's mercy, per se. You did break one of his laws, right? You broke, you broke the laws of the society by running through the red light or whatever. But ultimately, the pardon of that transgressed law just comes not by you, all right? But by that dude who wanted to have mercy on you. Now, if, say, you get pardoned from running that red light, or for speeding, do you then say, fuck it, I'm just going to keep running red lights and keep speeding? Nah, you're going to say, shit, man. I got a little favor right there. Let me not do it again. So that was your house shy, man. All right? As an analogy, is he's pardoned us, but that doesn't give us license to keep sinning and keep fucking up and following the deeds of our, uh, our hearts or our minds. No. You know? Romans 3 and 11, I believe, tells us we establish the law. Do we then make void the law? So, okay, let me search it. It should be Romans 3. I just don't remember what verse. Void law? Yep. Oh, shit. Come on now. Romans 3 and 31. Do we then make void the law through faith? See, I just spoke about faith and grace and mercy. So one might say, look, hey, we've got license to sin. That's pretty much what they do in the churches, right? They eat all types of abominable meat. All the law is done away with. You could eat whatever you want to eat and just, just pray to Jesus. You know, forgive you. Well, the Apostle Paul says, do we then make void the law through faith? Most I forbid. Yea, we establish the law. So faith doesn't trump the law the laws are still in full effect you know if there's no law there's no sin but you know sin's still here and the proof on that is this place is going to get judged for all of its sins america the nation's two-thirds they're going to get judged for all the deeds in breaking the law statutes commandments that they've done so what i'm gonna do now is go to Hebrews 7 and 14 because we have to establish who the Lord's people are. Hebrews 7 and 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which, the, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. So our Lord was of the flesh. He had a body. And he was of a natural birth. It wasn't a miraculous birth. Because when you read Matthew's the first chapter, there's a genealogy. And the pedigree is determined by the Father. That's in the book of Numbers, chapter 1, verse 21, I believe. Or 2 and 18, I'm sorry, it should be 2 and 18. Let me just double check. Let me go to Numbers 2 and 18. Maybe 1 and 18. Let's try that. Let's try 1 and 18. Numbers 1 and 18. Yep. Numbers chapter 1, verse 18. 
and they assembled all the congregation together on the first and they declared their pedigrees after their fathers by the house of their fathers according to the number of the names for 20 years old and upward by their poles so your pedigree or your genealogy is determined by whatever your father is man the father determines the genealogy okay and Yahweh I had that in the book of Matthew's one verse the first chapter all the way down to the 21st chapter and he came out of the tribe of Judah one of the 12 patriarchs all right that was brought forth by Jacob so he was an Israelite that's who his people are and the Negroes Latinos the Native Americans pursuant to the prophecies that are written in Deuteronomy the 28th chapter fit the children of Israel and Romans 8 chapter says look the spirit of self bear witness that we are the spirit of the heavenly father so all these prophecies fit us you know the curses the blessings the swagginess you know what I'm saying the sauce all this you know we got flavor we're the, we're the soul of the earth so our people fit that man um now it said that he came out of a tribe that not concerning priesthood because the priesthood was given to the tribe of Levi but when Yahweh went on the cross and the uh, temple was rent that signified that all of us now would be a nation of kings and priests you know because prior to Yahweh Shai you couldn't mix the office of the kingship with the office of the priest but thanks to Yahweh Shai you now had that there was a king in the history that tried that and I believe by the name of Uzziah. And he was punished for it because that's something you're not supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? Little yeah, man. I know, that, I know certain brothers would appreciate that sight. But uh, yeah, going back to the uh, topic at the end is uh, yeah. You weren't supposed to break. You, that was a breach. You know, the Levites dealt with stuff that Levites dealt with. And the kings dealt with things that the kings dealt with. Prime example, like touching the Ark of the Covenant. But with Yahweh Shai, we're now a nation of kings and priests. I'll open up the statement with, I, I said, I'm the priest Shaman. Now, that's not a ranking or anything like that. Because I'm of the tribe of Benjamin. I'm a Benjamin. I'm not a Levite. But all the brothers you see teaching are priests, man. Whether you're Ephraimite, whether you're Judite. Because this is a priesthood, man. This is Yahweh Shai's priesthood. So we all, you know, we all priests in that sense. You know? This is the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Yahweh Shai, the son of the Most High, let us hold fast our, our profession. So the apostles letting us know that, look, Yahweh Shai, He's a high priest, man. Was he a Levite? No. But he started his ministry at the age of 33, which is spiritual because, um, so like at the age of 30, just like John the Baptist, which is spiritual because when he go into the law or the book of Numbers, I believe that was the age of uh, uh, you start the priesthood. says Yahweh Shai the son of the Most High let us hold fast our profession now when you hold fast something it means you tighten it's like how one might say fasten your seatbelt you lock in you hold tightly this thing don't fumble it so how do you hold fast the word of the Heavenly Father 
You put together lessons. You go out on the highways and byways and you try your best to edify our people. First and foremost, this thing has to be done in sincerity. And you can't pull a fast one on the Heavenly Father and Son, man. You have to truly believe in this thing. You have to truly believe that this place will be destroyed. That an RFID microchip will be implemented on a global scale. The Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are the true people of the Heavenly Father. And the elect amongst them are going to be delivered out of here on the chariots. Or what is commonly called as UFOs. And it sounds far-fetched to certain people. But there's a reason it sounds far-fetched. Because the Most High set it up in a way that we could go on these scriptures and plainly see it. But to the non-believer, it's like, I don't know if you ever seen The Matrix. You know, The Matrix code, how it falls down the screen, and somebody that's outside The Matrix, they just understand it. They just understand that whole code. Well, like Neo was saying in the movie, it just looked like squiggly lines. That's, that's us. The most I unlocked this thing to us, that when we read these scriptures, it's clear, it's clear as day what it's saying. But to them, it's still just like words. You know, they don't see the deeper meaning in things. And again, that's all through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Yep. So, I'm going to close out with that. Turn this off. Decided to go. I mean, I, I know I'm going to try to do a little bit more walking during this scenario that's going on out here in New York. But I figured this lesson I'll give brothers is the background scenery, man. I'm big on I like scenery, man. So, But I pray for the... You know, that brothers are edified, which is the main objective of these lessons. So I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash, the blindness of the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, true well, man. Salutations to the whole for the elect out there, man. Akim to Sadakim, that do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. Till next time, brothers. Shalom.